Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, then welcome. I'm Kitch92, and thank you so much for joining me. Today, I have another unsolved murder case for you, and today we are going to be looking at Natalie Pierman's case. As always, I'm going to take you back and give you background information on Natalie and the kind of girl she was and her upbringing and so on and so forth. And then obviously the information we have on the lead up to what happened to her and the investigation. So, Natalie Pierman was born on 25th of December 1975. She lived with her mum Lynn, her stepfather Chris, along with her siblings. She grew up in a seaside town called Munsley, which is northeast of Norwich and it's in the county of Norfolk. And she grew up on, an, on a council estate. However, despite growing up on a council estate, she had a very normal upbringing. Her interests were ballet and horse riding, and Natalie had very big dreams and ambitions. Um, it is said that when she grew up, she wanted to be in the RAF and she wanted to travel the world. However, that all changed drastically when she reached 14 years old. Natalie began rebelling at home and at school, and she began hanging around with the wrong people, and then she went completely off the rails when she began taking drugs and this obviously caused major problems at home and when Natalie's mum Lynn could no longer cope with her daughter's behaviour um, Lynn apparently put Natalie into care um, but she did this hoping that some tough love would make Natalie see sense however um, things only grew increasingly worse when Natalie started working as a prostitute and became well known in the red light district in Norfolk. Now I just wanted to add in here that while Natalie was working in the red light district um, she actually went under a different name and I believe she actually called herself Maria. Now I did read somewhere in one of the articles that I was reading um, that Natalie was supposed to have been bringing home £500 a week and was apparently said to be boasting about her new love, lavish lifestyle and all the things she wanted to buy with the money that she was bringing in. Um, but Natalie had no idea, of course, of the dark fate that was awaiting her. Um, Natalie was working work in the red light district, as I said before, um, and she was actually working the night that she was murdered. Um, she was last seen alive sometime after 1 a.m., and then her body was found at 3.50 a.m. on the 20th of November 1992. Um, and she was just 16 years old at the time. Um, her body was found at Ringland Road in Norwich in a lay-by by a lorry driver. And of course, a post-mortem was carried out on her body. And that showed that Natalie had died from asphyxiation. And there was also signs of sexual activity shortly before she had died. Um, now, as for the investigation, police have interviewed more than 4,000 people. And they have also managed to recover some DNA from the crime scene, which they have used to profile more than 680 men. However, despite all of these interviews that they've done and the DNA and things that they have, um, nothing's ever come of any of these. Um, there was an appeal made back in 2011 which resulted in an anonymous caller claiming to have seen Natalie in King Street before her death. Um, despite multiple attempts by the police, no additional information was ever obtained from the mysterious caller. Uh, and then there was a further appeal made in 2017, which would have marked 25 years since Natalie's death. Um, and this was made jointly by Norfolk and Suffolk's investigation team, in which they managed to get 15 calls that included new names. Um, according to Detective Chief Inspector Caroline Miller, she is adamant that Natalie's case is one that could be easily solved with one piece of information. And she had also said she knows there are people who know or suspect who is responsible and that she is sure it weighs heavily on their conscience. All her and her team need is a name and they will do the rest. Detectives have even explored possible links between Natalie's murder and a serial killer by the name of Steve Wright, who murdered 
five sex workers in Ipswich and another man called Peter Tobin, but nothing came of either of these. And that's literally all I have on the case, all the information that I could find. <laughs> um, but when I was editing and things like that, I did come across a YouTube video that has been uploaded. It was like a documentary of some of some people going through this. Um, so if you want to see reenactments and a more in-depth one, then I'll link that down below. And as always, if anyone has any information, all the numbers will be in the description as well as all the articles I use to source my information so you can have a good read through them if you like. And as always, my thoughts and prayers go out to Natalie's family and I hope that they do get some closure soon. Um, and if you have a case that you want me to bring to light, just let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm sending all my love and positivity your way and please stay safe. Until next time, bye.